Welcome to the second King Films 2021 March Madness Bracketology Predictions video. Please be sure to subscribe to the channel as 97% of our viewers are not subscribed. And let's get into the prediction. To start with the top half of the first bracket, we still have Gonzaga at the number one overall seed despite Baylor's win over Oklahoma State. Baylor is ranked number one in the NET rankings, but Gonzaga has the strength of schedule metric and has the strength of record, so I'm going to keep Gonzaga here for a little while longer. It is worth noting that Baylor will almost certainly pass them if they maintain an undefeated regular season record. Moving on to the 8-9 matchup, we have Xavier and Virginia Tech. Xavier dropped one to Creighton, and Virginia Tech dropped one to Syracuse. These are two teams that are going to try and get back on track next week, and both dropped a line or two because of those losses. Tennessee also dropped a line, losing to Florida in blowout fashion, and then by a 10-plus to Missouri. So they are at the five line from where they were at the three line last week in the same quadrant. And we've got West Virginia. They kept an undefeated week, didn't play the best opponents, but they've got a huge game with Florida this next weekend, and we'll see how that one goes. Moving on to the other side, we've got our second overall seed in Baylor, and they have had just a great week here, beating Oklahoma State and then Kansas back on Monday. That was in the previous update video. Then we've got Louisville and LSU. LSU's coming off a loss to Kentucky, and Louisville's coming off a great win to UNC on Saturday. So both of these teams' seed lines moved respectively, given those results. UCLA dropped a line as they lost to Stanford, but beat Cal earlier. As I've said, this team could lose a lot more games as they got kind of bailed out in their first six out of eight Pac-12 games. But since they did get those wins, they helped their resume. Virginia's another team that could be a bit overrated, but made a huge jump this week over three seed lines. And I think they're a bit overrated, but they haven't really lost, so we'll wait for that to happen. Moving on to the bottom half of the bracket, we've got Oklahoma, who beat Kansas and went up five seed lines this week in a huge jump for them. And then we've got Colorado State, who split with Utah State, so they did not move from last week. Then we've got Missouri, who beat Tennessee and beat Texas A&M, I believe, earlier in the week. Did not move up just because Alabama filled the opening. We'll get to them at the two lines. So Missouri can't really go up anymore. They're the best three seed. But until an opening opens up at that two line, they can't move. Illinois stayed in pretty much the same spot with just those five losses on their resume. Not any great wins anymore, but they do have five great losses. And then Seton Hall played Villanova really close, but lost, so they suffered the ill effects of that. Houston put up another perfect week in the American and did not move. Florida had a great week with two wins, one of which being a blowout over Tennessee. This team is legit. Utah State, as aforementioned, split with Colorado State, did not move either. Florida State had a huge week, so both the Florida teams here and Florida State won that head-to-head -head matchup. So Florida State had a huge week beating Clemson on Saturday. That was their most recent game. St. Louis didn't play and rose a seed line. I don't really like this because St. Louis hasn't played in ages, but since so many good teams lost this week, they were able to move up. Pitt did not move this week. They beat Duke earlier in the week, but then lost to Wake Forest, who really stinks. Iowa moves down to the two line as they lost to Maryland this week. Getting to the bottom of the bracket, Texas takes Iowa's spot as the last one seed. And then we've got Boise State and UNC. These teams didn't move much. UNC goes up a line this week, and then Boise State stays put with a, another perfect week in the Mountain West. It will be interesting once those good Mountain West teams start to play. Then we've got USC, who's not down a seed, but down a couple spots in the seed line with a loss to Oregon State and a close win to Cal on the week. Not great for their tournament resume. And then we've got a 12 seed matchup that we'll go into later in the first four. Kansas had a horrible week, but their resume was just so built up that they can afford to lose these games at only a 10 and 5 record. They have great wins on the resume. So we'll see how this team moves. I think they're a bit overrated at the four seed right now, but we'll see. 
Clemson moved down three seed lines with three huge losses, one of which was already priced in last week when they were at the three line. But this Clemson team really needs to figure it out in too many more of these losses, and they're tarnishing a perfectly good resume. Wisconsin rose despite losing to Ohio State just because of other movement within other good teams from seeding. Minnesota drops five seeds as they lose to Maryland and were not able to secure an away win at Nebraska due to COVID issues. Oregon loses to Oregon State in their only game of the week. Coming off of COVID pause, we see the same thing with Clemson. Hopefully it doesn't go too downhill for this team, but Oregon is not looking good off that COVID pause. Villanova is a team that's looking good off their COVID pause, going 2-0 against Providence and Seton Hall close this week. And let's go to the right side of the bracket. We've got a one-seed Michigan still in the same place. And then we've got BYU still rocking in the WCC, winning those games that they need to be. Arkansas rallied back to 4-4 four and four in SEC play in a huge week for them. They're back up to the 9-seed from the 10. Colorado lost to Washington. That is an inexplicable loss. If there was a quad five, that would be a quad five loss. At least it was on the road. That put a bullet in their hopes. And their only other win in the week was Washington State. This team needs to rally back if they want to keep their tournament hopes alive for a great seed. Texas Tech was a big mover up four seeds. And this is pretty much just some wins in the past getting priced in more as seed movement. They didn't really get any huge wins this week. They may have not even played, but I priced in a couple of their older wins a little bit more as the algorithms just worked their way this week. So Texas Tech is where they rightfully need to be right now at the four line. S Purdue rose three lines after some huge wins this week to the six line. And then we've got an 11 seed matchup between Syracuse and San Diego State didn't move. We'll get to that later. Then we've got Ohio State at the three seed. Monster week for this Ohio State team. I know they're a great team and a huge win over fellow three seed Wisconsin. And that should cement their tournament hopes and a top four seed for them for now. Then we've got Creighton, huge win over UConn, but coming off a two game slide, this was a team that was looking a lot better two weeks ago but a good win over UConn for them. Then 10 seed Stanford did not move since last week, but they did score a huge win over UCLA. We're not able to play USC earlier in the week because of COVID issues, but they remain in the 10 seed spot solidly in the tournament. Then we've got the hottest team in the nation, Alabama, two more huge wins this week, and they gain to the two line. Into the first four matchups, we've got that Florida A&M and North Alabama game still. I'll only update these automatic bid qualifiers once every two to three weeks because there's really not much movement between them and it's really just riding on those tournaments. So those will be filled in later in March. Then we've got Syracuse and San Diego State. Huge week for Syracuse. They came back from those pit losses to beat a good Virginia Tech team by 20 at home. And then San Diego State just stays put, getting two wins over Air Force. Then Rutgers just cemented their way into the picture today. And they beat Indiana to cement their hopes as a 12 seed right now. Again, any bid thieves would ward them out of the tournament. And then St. Bonaventure just got another win, so we'll put them in the tournament. We had them on the waiting room graphic, and they just worked their way into the tournament. Speaking of the waiting room, let's get into it. So Indiana, as I mentioned, is going to be first. They lost to Rutgers. Had they won that game, they'd be in right now. But they have a tremendous amount of losses. And so does the third team, Maryland. I'll skip around a little. Another Big Ten team. Same story. A ton of losses. Some pretty good wins, but too many losses to be in the tournament right now. At number two, we've got SMU. Scored a huge win over UCF and otherwise they were coming off COVID issues, so that's huge for them. At number four, we've got Providence. They lost to Villanova later in the week, but they need a couple more Big East wins to get themselves into the tournament. Number five, Richmond suffered a huge loss for their hopes against LaSalle this weekend. That did not help them at all, or the A-10 Conference at large. Michigan State has been slumping. They were in the tournament last week, fallen down to sixth here. Then we've got at seven, Georgia Tech. This team's kind of rolling, lost to Virginia by two, but that's a good Virginia team, so we will 
accept the loss, so to speak, and put them at seven in the waiting room where they were not ranked last week. And then number eight, St. Mary's out of WCC have some good wins, and they're doing well in WCC play, bar a few early losses to Santa Clara and BYU. So that wraps up the waiting room. I hope you enjoyed this second edition of Bracketology. Good for the 25th of January. Thanks for watching.